Welcome to my zone online school. My name is teacher Mutsa. Get your education booklet in our daily newspaper, street sales, or at your school every Monday to Thursday for pre-primary up until grade three. The lessons are for listening or watching online. Inside the newspapers, there's an insert of the lesson booklet. Please cut the top of the lesson booklet with a pair of scissors and fold it for ready to use. But there is more. We are also available on our online platforms, MyZone and Zoshi Facebook pages, and in addition, our website, Zoshi Online. Welcome to my zone online school. My name is Teacher Mutsa and thank you so much for joining me today. Our theme this week is healthy lifestyle and winter. And before we get into any lessons, boys and girls, we know that we have to sanitize. So let's take our sanitizer and let's sing our special sanitizing song. Sanitize every day so the germs can stay away. Sanitize every day so the germs can stay away. Good job, everyone! For today's lesson, we will be talking about reading comprehension, common nouns, and Problem solving. Now, boys and girls, let's all turn to page 23. On page 23, we are going to be doing a reading comprehension. Now, remember, the word comprehension means understand. So, we need to read in order to understand the story and answer the questions that follow. The first time when we read it is to make sure we know what the story is all about. The second time is to try and find the answers to the questions. And then the third time is to make sure that we answered all the questions correctly. So, let us begin by reading the box that we can see it says, I have a new hat. My hat is little and red. I like it a lot. I wear it every time I go outside. My mom bought it for me. So this is our comprehension. And it seems like a wonderful comprehension talking about a hat. Now, before we read it a second time, we need to read our questions so that we know what to look for when we read it a second time. The first question says, my hat is dash and dash. My hat is dash and dash. The second one says, or is asking, who is it from? Who is it from? Then the third one is saying, which hat do you like? Which hat do you like? Now for the first one, you need to fill in two spaces. So you can complete the sentence and say, my hat is, 
then you put the first answer and then you put the second answer. For number two, we only need one word. And then for number three, it's asking you, which hat do you like? Do you like the first one, the second one, or the third one? It is up to you. So now that we are done with our questions, let's read our comprehension a second time. Let's begin. I have a new hat. My hat is little and red. I like it a lot. I wear it every time I go outside. My mom bought it for me. Now I want you to please fill in your answers, take your time, and then when you are done, try and read the comprehension by yourself. Remember, if you're not sure, you can always ask an adult to help you with the reading. Now that we are done explaining that one, when you are done, I'd like you to please move on to the next page, page 24. On page 24, we're going to continue with our English, but this time we're going to be doing common nouns. Now, a noun can be the name of a person or people, an animal, places, or things. In this case, we have one, a box that has names of people, animals, places, and things. Below it, we have those same things that need to be put in order. So, I have written a few on the board and we are going to help each other find out where they belong. The first word we have is the word country. Country. Is country a people? Sometimes, but not today. <laughs> is country animals? No. Is country a place? Yes, a country is a place. Just like this country is a place and the place is called Namibia. So we know that we can put the word country in the box where it says places. So I'm going to write our word country and I'd like you to do the same as well. And when you're writing, please make sure you copy the word correctly, boys and girls. Then, when you're, write, when you're done writing the word, I would like you to also now cross it out so that you don't go and put it in another place. So the word country is a place. Now we're looking for the word dog and where it belongs. Is dog a people? <laughs> no, it's not. Is dog an animal? Yes, dog is part of animal. So we're going to write the word dog and then we are going to cross out the word dog. So we know that the noun or the common noun dog is for an animal. Let's now move on to the word book. Is book a people? No. Is book animals? No. There are books about animals, but there are no books that are animals. <laughs> Is book places? No. So that means books are things. So we're going to write the word book in the right place which is under things and then after that we're going to cross out the word book so that we don't go and put it in another place now we're going to look for the word mountain mountain is mountain a people no how about a animal no 
What about a place? Hmm, yes, but let's just check if mountain is a thing. Well, now this is where I'm going to ask you. Can you go to a mountain? If the answer is yes, then that means a mountain is a place. Can you touch and hold a mountain? No, we cannot touch or hold a mountain. So that means our answer is place. A mountain is a place. So we're going to write the word mountain. Remember to copy all your words correctly, boys and girls. And then after that, we will cross out the word mountain. The last word that we have is the word granny. Is granny a thing? No. <laughs> is granny a place? Mm -mm, that's not correct either. Is granny an animal? No, that's not correct. Which means granny is a person. The person that belongs in our family actually. So we are going to write the word granny. And then after that, we are going to cross out the word granny. The rest of the words that are there as common nouns, you're going to do by yourselves. Remember, you need to ask yourself if it fits in any of these boxes before you write it down. And then when you're done, please cross it out before you move on to the next one. Have fun, my dear children, and don't forget to read out loud. I'll see you soon after the advert break. Follow us on My Zone Facebook Active Kids to watch your daily lesson and other fun activities with Zoe and Zoshi. For our lesson now, boys and girls, let's end on page 25. On page 25, we are going to be doing problem solving sums. Now remember, a problem solving sum is a short story that has a problem which we need to solve. We can solve it by either adding, subtracting or sharing. In this case, we first need to read so that we know what we are doing. So we're going to read it two times before we start putting it in place. Let's read together number three. Joe has eight balloons. Three of them burst. How many balloons are left? Joe has eight balloons. Three of them burst. How many balloons are left? Now, the word burst means to pop. So if we have eight balloons, that means three of them popped. In this case, we are going to subtract because when something pops and it's a balloon, that means we are making them less. So what we're going to first do is count the balloons we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight balloons. So you are going to write the number eight in the first box. Now we have said eight minus. So we need to minus how many? Three, because the story tells us that three of them burst, which means to pop. So we're going to write three in the next box. That means we have said eight minus three. I'd like you to please cross out the red balloons that you can see. After crossing out the red balloons, please count what is left, which means what remained or what did not burst. And those are the purple ones. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. So that means there are five balloons left. I'd like you to please write the number five in the last box. 
So that makes our sum say 8 minus 3 equals 5. For the rest of the problem solving sums, please ask someone to help you read and make sure that you use the pictures to help you make up your sum. Take your time boys and girls, make sure that you count properly and when you're done, check by reading the story again. Have fun and I'll see you soon after the advert break. Do you have children in the age range of 5 to 6 years and want to participate in our school booklet program? Please contact us on 81 and we will put you on our distribution list for the attention of pre-primary schools. Topics include family, summer, culture, traditions and houses, transport and communications, occupations, autumn and more. We distribute countrywide in over seven different languages. We have now come to the end of our lesson, boys and girls, and I hope you had fun. I know I did. Remember, if you're not sure on what to do, you can always ask an adult for help. Just make sure you continue practicing and that you finish your exercise by yourself. Now that we are done, we need to sanitize. Remember boys and girls, it's very important for us to sanitize before and after. And how do we do that? By rubbing inside. Very good. Round and round. Good. In between our fingers. Well done. On our wrists. And our fingertips too. Well done. Make sure your hands are dry before you touch anything else. Sashi said we're going to go outside, but I haven't seen him come in. Sashi, are you here? Sashi? Oh, <laughs> there you are, Sashi. Hello. So, from Sashi and I, we would like to say thank you for joining us today. And goodbye. <laughs>